Hello, Alex Gomez here. On today's video, we're gonna go from 2D to 3D based on this design from Daniela Olig. So we're gonna go from this to this. If you want to see the whole process in real time, please visit my ArtStation store. For more character creation videos, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post a video every Friday. As we start our sculpting, we uh, start like a block in the head. Um, mostly, the most important thing is to block out your character so you get the right proportions in the beginning and uh, it's uh, easier to get a better result at the end when you do a proper block out. If you want to see a proper way to block out, just check my video about Black Adam uh, blocking out the proper way. So as you see here, I just start kind of like, a, I don't care much about if it looks or doesn't look at it. I just kind of like want to mark uh, like uh, where the mouth and the nose and the eyes goes, kind of like a, try to do with the, um, uh, the skull. So I know that, for, uh, that the character is gonna have uh, the mouth open a little bit. So in that case, I'm gonna kind of like drop the jaw a little bit as uh, you saw me masking and then I just work on the mouth. So uh, the other day I was watching a video of Danny Mac and uh, he kind of like changed his workflow and instead of creating like the eyelids from the same eye sphere kind of thing because that's something that I do I I create the eye and then I duplicate that sub tool and then I cut it in half and then I duplicate it again and I rotate it and that's how I create the upper and lower eyelid so in this case I just kind of like I fill out all the part of the eye sockets and just did kind of like the eyelids that way and start like making shapes I think I probably like this process is a little bit faster than the one I was doing because you have to kind of like dynamesh and and combine all the tools in the same one so I think probably like this workflow is a little bit faster for me and uh, yeah it was a really interesting video really cool like I totally recommend that if you guys want to check out check it out and take a look at it but yeah it's uh like the more heads that you make and noses and mouth like it definitely you're gonna get a lot of uh you're gonna get better and uh, that's what I, i'm uh, finding lately because i've been doing like these kind of characters like every time i do a nose it's easier every time that i do a mouth it's easier so uh, as i always say like pra practice 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 and you, you're gonna master the techniques that's for sure as you see here like i kind of like start adding colors and colors for the eyes. I normally do the eyes like that because I, I, I have my, my set of eyes that, that, I, that I made and I really don't uh, kind of like, uh, don't bother like, or of importing them in, in ZBrush. So I just do an eye in ZBrush and I just uh, poly paint and kind of just to have as a reference of proportions and look, that's all that I do. And, and for example, right here when I'm uh, working in the ear, uh, the ear is totally separate. So when I do the merge, I do in a high resolution of Dynamesh. So I don't lose my details that I already work on. I kind of like lose a little bit, but not much. So in, in this model, I definitely did the body and the head totally separate. And separate uh, entities, so no entities, uh, separate sub tools because I thought that it would be easier in case that I have to post the model and for UVs and stuff. I don't know, I just find it. I, 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 in the final image, I don't see the connection be in, between the head and the body, so why I will bother? This is just for an image. If it's for, for production, it's totally different story. You definitely have to do it so even though I'm not as close enough of the likeness that I wish to do I still work uh, or go back and forward between like the eyes the nose and the mouth I kind of like a, when I stick with just with one feature I kind of like a, don't see it as right I have to 
change the features like go to the mouth and work on it and then go back and then I, I can see it what is uh, lacking and I can just fix it or improve it so I was uh, as I was mentioning before I just use uh, a pen a uh, sphere and from that sphere I start doing uh, the body and because the body is a little bit rotated and uh, it's a little bit different uh, that's why I decided to just do two separate pieces and same with the arms the arms are going to be like two separate pieces than the torso so because in that case I, I, I work the arms are so together to the chest that uh, when I start sculpting with the body I start sculpting with a lower resolution so when I'm dying a machine I don't want to lose the detail or that crease that is going like a between the the arms and the chest of the model so once I have the proper uh, the proper uh, sculpting anatomy of the torso I then Dynamesh in a really high resolution the the arms so I don't lose that crease I still you, you can still use the damn standard uh, in that case just to to uh, do it more obvious but I totally recommend if you have like a, any uh, limbs like legs when you're sculpting legs arms or forearms that are bending or touching do it separate until you get the right uh, the right um, shapes and then dynamic in a higher resolution so the hair the hair as you always know and I always say this is like the hardest part but I think I'm getting it better because probably I've been practicing um, in this case uh, one of the things that you have to do with the hair is just block out the parts that you think how the hair goes like the parts and the flow how it flows so for example I know that it has like a, some bangs or her hair is going right to the left side so I know that's a piece and then in the right one that's another piece in the back I don't care as much because it's just the back and I'm not gonna see it in this moment but if you were about to see it it definitely like a block that back if it's just one piece or two pieces or three pieces but the more pieces can you block your hair the better it's gonna look um, it's definitely like a really good te technique to do it really helped me a lot and and i think that i found this workflow a uh, very useful and definitely i'm gonna use it in the future sculpts for sure because i really like it like it's, it's it kind of like it became easier to can break down the head in that matter So in some parts that are, are maybe gonna be visible, I'm just gonna um, kind of like uh, add the, the the strands. So you can make those strands like a very simple with a with a curve tool, and uh, make sure when if you want them like sticking to it, you go to picker in the menu and go to uh, once set. I think so. I think it's that one if you don't want to stick on, on, on the piece that you already have or, or the mesh per se so in here you see I kind of like I add some details and start working on it kind of like a blocking out kind of like a sub blocking out that part of the hair I think it's important as well to, to, to do that and then I just add some strands just kind of like to cover it like for me like these sculptors are exercises that I that I do uh, it's, it's a weekly exercise uh, because I want to share my process and also I want to improve in my art as well and I want to document uh, and I want to see like uh, how was my first YouTube video or how was my first uh, uh, character like a human character stylize and, and compare what my process has been since then and I think it's really important that you document your process and, and, and see 
how your workflows and how your art has improved or has changed by the time that you say like wow I've been practicing every week and I've been sharing this process with the community so you would be sur surprised how how much of a better artist you become when you stick to a schedule and you document your process so yeah like uh, using those trends for the hair like I, I feel that I find that I found a good flow to do this part I definitely didn't struggle as much as before I asked on Instagram and a lot of people gave me good tips uh, some people say Dynamesh and uh, not Dynamesh Fiber Mesh and I just like oh, I don't want to groom and and action and I don't want to groom and uh, because I don't have the time to do all these uh, characters it's just a boss I do it in a week and it's just uh, a simple exercise that I want to do to improve my art as I mentioned before so for me doing action and stuff like that it takes a lot of time because it's not that I have a lot of time I have a family I have a job I have uh, I, I teach also so I am very busy but I still want to keep improving my, my, my 3d art and I have projects on the go as well I was freelance so it's a little bit hectic but I'm gonna keep with the schedule I'm gonna keep putting videos out and I want this is my journey and I really want to share my journey with you guys that's the most important for me that you guys can see my growth as an artist and maybe be inspired and see that you guys can grow as well at the same time as long as you practice that's that's the key you just there's no secret formula of make you a a uh, better artist in two weeks or three weeks of work. it's just freaking practice all the time yeah there's no shortcuts for this at all there's no shortcuts now we're gonna be jumping into texturing so once you bring your character to texture make sure that you have like a what, what I do is, is have like every single piece of the character in different in shade of group so uh, I normally like uh, set it up in Maya uh, you can see the process uh, how I set up the character in the video that I mentioned before that I have uh, on our station link in the in, in the description of this video so for this eye I made a mistake I just wanted to show you this because like I made a mistake I have the eye I have the texture but I wanted to paint it over it didn't work out so I ended up just painting in Photoshop I spent some time doing it and I think you know like learn from your mistakes I have a nice texture so I just kind of like paint it over and uh, those files are included in, 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 in that package in that video link in the description as well so for the face I just start with a base color and with the base color I just start adding like some shades of uh, red for the lips and another shade of red for the some part of the tip of the nose the bone cheeks and a little bit around the eyes and I really use a very um, slow, uh, small flow and, it's, and the transparent the opacity of the brush is really slow uh, not slow it's really low as well I don't use a normal brush for for painting the face I normally use a dirt brush for that which gives like a nice spatter so as you see I spent time doing the eye and this I said ah, that's not working out I'm just gonna do something different I'm just gonna just do it straight in Photoshop didn't work for me so as I say like uh, you can do oh you can know how to do stuff but it's about the fundamentals here uh, so yeah so for me to see how the colors are going I definitely go to the base color instead of having the whole material because sometimes with the whole material and the lights you don't see as much while you're painting so switching between the the material to the base color and, and see where you're painting is, is a good uh, workflow to do as well so yeah this is what I do I'm probably gonna end up doing a more um, uh, uh, texturing video of the characters but once I have it uh, ready 
Uh, one of the things that I, I bring in Maya, I'm a Maya guy. I'm trying to get in Blender, I'm getting there. But for me, Maya is my, my tool of choice. So what I definitely do here is just set up the materials of surface scattering uh, and I put just uh, dome light that you can use Redshift Arnold or whatever other other um, a render engine are you using and that's what I do just to give just a little bit of diffuse just a little bit of, 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 of a light it's not that it's gonna be my main light uh, because I create my main lights I always uh, work with a three-point lighting and uh, that's always the way that I go like a uh, three lights and I add a little bit of colors sometimes I just use two when I have a HDRI but sometimes I just go with three also there's some things that I um, fix on the on, on the process you know that I don't see that are looking good in the render so I go and I kind of like move some up with the sculpting tools. This is what I was talking about. I just go to Photoshop and change the eye, paint it over, and start looking way better than what it was. And I go back and forward. And sometimes, like the color of the skin, I don't like, so I just go back to Substance Painter as well and change the colors. And this is what lighting means like lighting and texturing look development you go back and forward back and forward and trying to match that light with the texture it's not that you're gonna do texturing and you're all set and it's gonna be all ready no it's not gonna be like that and you have to go back and forward between texturing and lighting to get the proper look so once i have kind of like the look the similar look and I really love Redshift, like I throw these renders around like 20 seconds, 1080 by 1080, and it's pretty fast. So yeah, so this is my process, and if you like, if you guys like this uh, video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Don't forget to check out my other two videos, and see you next Friday. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and take care, and have an amazing weekend.